Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a very good day. So it is the end of February, time to do my book reviews. You guys know the drill, there are annotations at the bottom of the video, so feel free to click on any of the links to jump to that specific review. So my first book review, guys, is The Fire Chronicle by John Stevens. This is the second book in the Books of Beginning series. It's a middle grade fantasy book. I'm enjoying it, so lots of fun, lots of fantasy elements, cliffhanger endings one after the other. It's insane. So first, let's start with what The Fire Chronicle is all about. Very vague, very unspecific cryptic even. So the story continues from the first book, The Emerald Atlas. We follow our main characters, Kate, Michael, and Emma. They are siblings. We find out in The Emerald Atlas that there are these three magical, powerful books. They can change the universe. They they have the power. And we find out that these books are destined to be found by these three children obviously. And so in the first book, the Emerald Atlas is found, and in the sequel, they are searching for the Fire Chronicle, the second book in the set. That's pretty much a quick synopsis of what the Fire Chronicle is all about, guys. Next, let's talk about the character, specifically Michael. He is featured in the sequel of this book. He is the middle child, Michael in the middle. Oh, Michael, he is so adorable and yet so very annoying at the same time. And by annoying, I mean he has that brotherly sibling annoying quality that all siblings have. Have, you know what I mean if you have siblings. Throughout the book, Michael has this uppity no doll kind of attitude that was really annoying, but he has a really good heart. He has very, very good intentions. He loves his sisters a whole lot. So there's a lot of self-reflection, lots of introspection involved with Michael's character, which I really liked. As far as the other characters, there's a lot of side and secondary characters that are being introduced into the sequel. Lots of really fun, lighthearted, comedic relief characters. And of course we have Dr. Pym, who is very magical and reminds me a lot of Dumbledore. There are a lot of, you know, Dumbledore-esque moments going on within the Fire Chronicle, which I thought was lovely. Next, guys, I want to talk about the plot of the Fire Chronicle. Lots of fantasy, lots of action and adventure throughout this series so far, I'm finding. It's really reminding me a lot of Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings. I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing. You know, we know everything is a remix. Definitely check out that series, guys. There were just moments that were really reminiscent of those stories, but there are also other elements within the series that make it different and make it its own story, which I really liked. The time travel aspect is really cool. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to give The Fire Chronicle by John Stevens. Four stars out of five. I really enjoy this book, guys. Went through it like nothing. Really fun fantasy middle grade adventure book. There are moments in the writing where I feel it's targeted towards that demographic, but overall, it's just a really fun story. If you've enjoyed Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, it's kind of a mix between the two. If you enjoyed those two stories, I really suggest checking the Books of Beginning series out. Definitely do. My next book review, guys, is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. This is the first book in the Thursday Next series lots of fun guys lots of funny moments throughout this book so let me tell you what it's all about we have our main character Thursday next she is a literary detective she works for the literatex there's a lot of side stories and subplots going on within the air affair but the main story arc that's going on in the air affair we have the antagonist Hades he has stolen the original manuscripts of stories and he's able to go into the story and mess things up and it's up to Thursday next to stop him Lots of other things going on. We'll talk about it when we get to the plot aspect. But first, let's talk about the characters. Really, really enjoyed Thursday Next. She was a strong, kick-ass female character. I really liked her a whole lot. But she's definitely one of those characters that does things before she kind of thinks them through. And so in doing so, a lot of people have gotten hurt. Things have blown up in her face because of her rash decisions. But uh, that's all part of your character. And I really like how she thinks quickly on her feet and she's very resourceful. The next character I want to briefly talk about guys is our antagonist Hades. He's definitely a sly antagonist. He reminds me of the Joker in some ways. He's definitely motivated by creating destruction anarchy. He's definitely a smart villain. He has a charismatic personality. He was pretty dastardly. So that's Hades. Definitely a villain archetype that I really like. Next guys, let's talk about the plot of the air affair. Oh my goodness guys, this is a crazy story. There is no one genre that can contain this series. When I was reading the air affair, it has this very stylized, over the top, kind of criminal investigation genre feel to it, which I really enjoy. If you watch any of the drama cop shows on TV, this one is definitely a story you will have to check out. There's also a lot of fantasy 
you see science fiction elements going on, mystery, drama, there's a political subplot going on within the Air Affair as well. That subplot wasn't really feeling. I was more looking forward to the Jane Eyre aspect of the story and you definitely do get that but more concentrated towards the end of the book. Oh my goodness, I wouldn't want to live in this reality without Thursday next fixing everything. So in the end, I did feel kind of overwhelmed with all of the different elements, subplots going on within the story. And the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is the writing. It's so good. I think he's becoming one of my favorite authors. Just the style of his writing, the sense of humor. There's some stylistic writing as well, which I thought was a lot of fun with punctuations. Hilarious hilarious that was so cool <laughs> jarring but really cool i also like how he incorporates elements of his story within the actual book like goliath advertisements of dodos and toast the the writing style and the story itself is very immersive so with that being said guys i'm going to give the air affair by jasper ford Four stars out of five. Really, really enjoyed the book, guys. Reading this book, it was like you were pushed into this world and you were trying to figure out what was going on along the way. So something new was coming up as the story progressed all the time. And so it was just a bit overwhelming at times. So my last book review for you guys is 13 Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johnson. This is my first Maureen Johnson book. I was very excited. Very cute story. Love the story. Uh, so let's talk about what that is. So our main character in 13 Little Blue Envelopes is Ginny. She receives 13 little blue envelopes and within them are letters from her aunt. And her aunt has written instructions on these letters and she is to follow them and follow the rules and just do whatever these letters say. Euro trip, people. The premise, lots of fun. Next guys, let's talk about our main character, Ginny. I really related to Ginny a whole lot. There were aspects of her character that I was really able to identify with. She's shy. She feels that her life isn't all that interesting. There were other aspects of her character that I was a bit confused about because of her shy, straight-laced, sensible nature. Just going on this adventure in the first place. I know if she didn't go on the adventure, there wouldn't be any point to the story, but that's a lot of courage on her part. So there were kind of a posing characteristic personality elements that didn't seem realistic but maybe it is realistic I'm just probably a different person and of course we have to talk about Keith the love interest I thought he was a lot of fun very funny very British really cute he wasn't there throughout a lot of the story but whenever he had a presence it's a lot of fun so those are my feelings on the characters relatable in some aspects not relatable in other aspects but you know that's just me next guys let's talk about the plot of 13 little blue envelopes come on reading these envelopes is like hey do this here's some money just go go and have fun and do these crazy things. I thought that was really cool. There would be some mishaps along the way and that was very realistic. And at times there were also aspects of the plot that I didn't feel was very realistic. Again, because I felt Ginny was a sensible straight-laced person. There were moments of the story where I felt she should have been more apprehensive doing certain things. There was this one detail in the story that I couldn't get over and I really should have. It wasn't really relevant to the plot at all, but I thought, hey, how did she get her parents to let her go on this Euro trip by herself? Because her mother does not approve of her sister's, you know, free spirit behavior, her non-traditional way of life. And I wouldn't have thought that her mother would let her daughter go on this crazy trip by herself. So it was kind of nagging at me at the back of my mind. It's like, how, how does this happen? And there were moments in the plot certain chapters that I felt were kind of anticlimactic. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to give 13 little blue envelopes. Three stars out of five stars. Really thought this story was cute. Related to Ginny in a lot of ways. Some aspects, not so much. But Keith, he was fun to read about. He was great. I'd really like to check out the last little blue envelope. What that's all about. So those are my book reviews for the month of February. Very good reading month. That's everything, guys. I will talk to you guys later. Have a very good one. Bye.